Hello and welcome back to a very grey and drizzly Portugal where we're in the midst of a bit of a storm although there's been a break in the rain which is nice you might just be able to hear the generator in the background we've had quite a bit of grey weather and we have quite a bit to come and so we thought it'd be a great opportunity to start another one of our archive series and show you the whole process of setting up this in the background which is our off-grid living setup which we've been living in for almost two years now. And we're gonna start with some of our plans for what we were gonna do here. And it's quite interesting to see the contrast between what we planned to do and what we actually did. And so we're gonna head back in time to when this place looked nothing like this, although it was still full of a whole load of stuff, and talk through some of our plans for building all of this. So all of this stuff that we've pulled out of the house we put here in a nice organized mess thinking that that would be a good place to put it all but it's interesting how plans change and now we need to move all of it and so hopefully most of the old furniture and stuff like that we can get collected by the council but a lot of this rubble and stuff like this that we've pulled off of the walls um, we'll have a future use for that later on so we aren't getting rid of this immediately but we do need to move it out of the way for an upcoming project here so whilst we start moving all this stuff from one place to another i thought i'd talk you through the overall plan and show you a few visualizations so the ultimate goal here is to get to a stage where we can move on to the property uh, the overall house project is going to take a long time and we don't really want to be paying rent and driving backwards and forwards for an hour every day because it's unnecessarily exhausting and expensive, even though we're only paying about 500 euros a month in rent and bills. That's something that we can be saving. So after much thinking and planning and sketching and head scratching, we've decided to build some temporary accommodation and that temporary accommodation will be in the form of a large tent. Trust me, it's not quite as crazy as it sounds. I'll show you what it looks like a little bit later on. But we actually need much more than just a tent to be comfortable for the next 6, 12, 18, maybe even 24 months while we get the house into a habitable state. We're going to need somewhere to cook, somewhere to store all of our food, somewhere to wash dishes and ourselves, bathroom facilities and a much more reliable power source as well. And so it's all of those things that I'm going to show you our plans for in this video. So let's jump into SketchUp and start with the threshing circle itself. So here is a scale diagram of our threshing circle, complete with the little opening down here. It is approximately nine meters across in diameter. It's about 9.1 meters. And here is where we are going to build a deck, a deck platform uh, on which our tent is going to sit. So it's a nice permanent solid base and a nice level base as well. We're also going to be building a shed on here and uh, some other bits and pieces as well. And I'll show you all of that as we go throughout the video. So into the circular threshing circle, we're going to be building a circular deck. Um, although when I say circular, really what I mean is 26 sided polygon deck. Um, which sounds a little bit complex and ambitious for our first ever deck building project, uh, but I thought it'd be a lot easier to try and build something with square or straight edges than it would be to do any kind of uh, like wood bending or steam bending or something like that. So we have a 26 sided polygon and um, that will be the perimeter of the deck. So we'll cut all the angles. I think it's about 15 degrees uh, for each one, although we can use this wonderful free piece of software for working out all of those angles um, because it's all been drawn to scale. So there will be our perimeter for the deck. And then on the inside, we're going to be making up four of these identical quadrants 
And the reason that we've gone for this kind of design is to maximize the timber that we have been able to source. So we're going to be using larch for this project. It's 80 mil by 60 mil and they come in four meter lengths. So this distance here where my mouse is moving at the moment, this is four meters and this is uh, just under four meters. In fact, they're all just slightly less than four meters in case we've got any damaged ends and stuff like that. So we'll be building four of these identical quadrants and they will go in like this. And then that gives us this cross section left over in the middle, which we will be reinforcing with a big center piece here and then putting in some noggins down the sides to screw this all together uh, with 100 mil stainless steel screws. And then on top of this, we will be laying some large deck boards and uh, because we've got this kind of uh, cross pattern here, uh, all lined up so that it's facing the entrance, um, we've gone for a cross pattern in the deck as well. Again, this gives us the opportunity to take advantage of the lengths of these boards. They come in four meter lengths, and then we'll be able to go and trim off all of the edges with a jigsaw or a circular saw uh, to uh, get it all nice and neat and tidy. So that is the plan for the threshing circle. It's going to be turned into this massive deck. I think we've ordered something like 75 square meters of deck boards. They won't all be used on here. There will be a couple of other things that they are earmarked for, but that is the plan for the threshing circle area. Um, it is a lot of timber. It is quite expensive, but it's something that is going to be a long standing permanent structure that we will use in the future. We may build a uh, pergola on top of this in the future. We may make this the site of the workshop. Uh, we may do some kind of uh, automatic follow the sun, solar panel housing thing here. Lots of options, but at the end of the day, it's going to be useful to have a permanent solid base that's had some design consideration and uh, build really, really structurally sound. So that's the platform that is going to be the uh, the foundation of everything. And uh, we will be building a couple of things on top of that. So onto our deck, we'll be building a shed. And the shed has got a couple of uh, purposes to it. Uh, so we'll be putting down some rails on top of the deck just to lift it off the ground a little bit. And then we've got some OSB. This will be the shed floor. And we'll be putting up a couple of framed walls as well, using the same 80 by 60 mil larch for these framing timbers and then covering everything in OSB. Probably put a little Perspex window in here just for a bit of natural light, but it won't be an opening window. And so this shed is going to serve a couple of purposes. It is going to house our solar equipment. And so over here on the wall is an approximation for what that is going to look like. Uh, we have uh, ordered some of this Victron Energy equipment, our inverter charger and MPPT solar charge controller. We'll be talking much more about the full solar spec kit breakdown installation in a later video. Um, and uh, here's where all of that stuff is going to be stored in here. And the second purpose for this shed building is going to be a temporary kitchen. So we'll put up some worktops again with just some of the same materials, OSB and the uh, the larch here. And that will give us some nice workspace, place to prepare food. We've got all the usual kitchen bits and pieces that will be able to run off the solar stuff. So kettle, toaster, microwave. Um, we'll probably put a small fridge under here as well so that we've got some way to keep food nice and cool. And uh, then there's loads of storage space underneath. Uh, and we can probably hang things on the walls as well if we need to for uh, anything to do with dry goods, utensils, storage, all of that kind of stuff. And so the reason that we've gone with a purpose-built shed like this is we were looking at the prices of buying the off-the-shelf ones and they were very expensive and really flimsy. So we thought we could probably build something much sturdier because it's going to be there to last for a while. Um, but also we'll be able to dismantle this and, and rebuild it into different shape, different size for uh, probably for a garden shed or a tool shed a little bit later on in the future. So um, we've got our base, our walls, our worktops, our solar stuff. Um, we will also be uh, recycling or reclaiming this door here. This is the old bathroom door. Um, so that will just save us a bit of uh, time, effort and money to uh, put something in that we've already got. And then we'll stick a roof on top. We're not 100% sure on the roofing material. Uh, the way that I've drawn this at the moment is with like a roofing felt. 
Uh, so that kind of uh, sticky adhesive type stuff um, with some more of our deck boards around the side here as some fascia. But we might go with like a corrugated roof, uh, maybe metal, maybe plastic. We're not 100% sure on that just yet, um, but we have got all the other materials in place. Um, and the only other change that we're going to make to this design is in terms of the, the overall height of it. Uh, at the moment, this has been uh, set up to use a, a full OSB board, which is two and a half meters. But we've looked into the permitted development rules for our area in Portugal, and the building needs to be less than 2.2 meters in height. So we'll be making some small adjustments to this, which I haven't done yet, just to reduce the height of it. To be honest, two and a half meters is is huge for a, for an outbuilding in terms of height. So uh, I think coming down to more of a two meter level, which will be pretty much to this horizontal mark here, will be a little bit more manageable. So that is the shed. And then over here to the side, this is where we're going to be adding in an additional structure, uh, which will be our solar shower. So the final piece to the puzzle here in terms of our temporary accommodation is some bathroom facilities. So we're going to be putting in a little composting toilet here. Uh, so a little OSB frame with a bucket inside and the uh, loose seat on the top. And then around this composting toilet, we'll be putting in some posts uh, for building a simple structure around this for a bit of privacy. And so we'll be putting in a little shower area on this larger side here, uh, and then the toilet off to one side. And then this is going to be given a little roof on the top just um, to keep you dry when you're doing your business. And uh, then we'll be putting some kind of cladding around the outside, not going floor to ceiling, but making sure it's nice and open air um, for perhaps obvious reasons, um, but also just to reduce materials as well. Uh, and so whilst these look like uh, nice, neat and tidy deck boards, we're probably going to be gathering some uh, materials from the local area, some uh, eucalyptus offcuts of which there's tons just piled up uh, around and about which we're free to take um, it will look slightly more organic and natural and uh, won't cost us anything which will be good so this is going to be attached to the shed uh, this will be the shed wall so these posts will be screwed into the side there uh, and i'll show you a full kind of uh, diagram of that in just a second so this is going to be a solar shower we haven't worked out all of the fine details in terms of the plumbing um, but the water is going to be heated by the sun. We're either going to use something like a camping shower, essentially a big black bag that we can hang up full of water, uh, which will give us a single use shower. Um, or we may be looking into something a little bit more involved with a coil of PEX pipe, um, which we'll put into a box with a piece of glass over the top, um, which will essentially be like a big solar heater collector uh, full of water, which we can then feed into a tank to keep warm. Uh, not just for showering, but for washing dishes and stuff like that. So uh, some of the finer details we've still got to work out here, um, but this will be a solar shower providing a warm shower for us, uh, along with all the other bathroom facilities that we might need. So when we put it all together, this is what we get. Here is the shed with the attached solar shower area sitting on the deck inside of the threshing circle. And we've got a little person here for a sense of scale. Uh, as I mentioned, the shed is going to be a little bit shorter than it's pictured here. Uh, and then if we zoom out a little bit, we can see where the solar panels are going to go. So we've got over here six 400 watt solar panels. That gives us a 2.4 kilowatt array. And we've got about 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So not a tiny system, but not the biggest either. And if we swing around here, we will see one final piece, which is the barbecue area. So that will give us some nice outdoor cooking space. And then off to the side here, we will probably put in some garden chairs. We've got a big uh, sail umbrella as well to give us some shade, some much needed shade in the summer. And then the final thing that is going to be taking up the vast majority of the remaining space is the tent. So here it is. Like I said, it's not just uh, like a small flimsy uh, put it up for a weekend kind of deal. It is a big, heavy duty twin bell tent. Uh, it's a canvas tent with plenty of space. It's six meters wide by four meters deep by almost four meters tall. And so there's plenty of space for a bedroom area. We'll be putting a king size bed in here. Uh, we'll be putting in a lounge area with some other sitting type places. Uh, and there'll even be plenty of space uh, over on the right hand side here for my desk and office setup uh, and some storage of things as well. 
So whilst it is a tent, it is a pretty sturdy one with plenty of space. Uh, something that we can potentially leave up for a long, long time. Uh, it's maybe something that we will even leave here permanently and uh, have a space for guests or friends and family, maybe even do some kind of Airbnb thing in the future when uh, travel and all of that stuff becomes a possibility again. And it is going to be our home for anywhere between six to 24 months. And so there you go. That's the plan. And uh, as we finish up the uh, the clearing here, um, I'll just mention that we did look at some other options. We thought about buying a yurt. We thought about a mobile home or a camper van. Um, but there were various reasons why those weren't suitable for us. Um, the tent was a really nice kind of combination of good price and a good amount of space and nice and sturdy. Um, when we get into the winter months, we can even put a wood burning stove in here. They make special camp tent stoves. Uh, and so that should keep us nice and warm in the winter. And as much as I thought we were completely mad when uh, the idea was floated about moving into a tent, the more time we've spent here putting some thought into the design, both for the platform and the shed and the, the solar setup so that we've got enough power here to live quite comfortably and to make sure that we've got all the, the facilities that we need, um, the, the more comfortable we are getting with the whole idea. But really the ultimate benefit here is being able to live on our land without having to pay rent, being there to go at our own pace with the project and uh, get stuck into all of the, the renovation stuff, the restoration stuff and all of the outdoor projects as well. So we're really excited and uh, obviously lots more stuff to come on all of these. This is really just the, the beginning and the showing you the plans. And I think in the next video, we're going to be starting on the deck. Uh, that may take a while to get going just because there's quite a bit to do, um, but we'll see how we go with that. And we'll try and get a video out to you as soon as possible. So uh, stick around and uh, we will see you in the next one.